There are four free response questions on the AP Precalculus exam. This is FRQ 1 from 2024. It's primarily about composition, zeros, limits, and inverses. If you appreciate the content, please give it a like. The figure shows the graph of the function f on its domain from negative 3.5 to positive 3.5. The points negative 3 comma 1, 0 comma 1, and 3 comma 1 are on the graph of f. The function g is given by g of x equals 2.916 times 0 0.7 to the x power. A part 1. The function h is defined by h of x equals g of f of x. This notation means the same as this. Find the value of h at 3 as a decimal approximation or indicate that it is not defined. h at 3 means plug in 3 for x right here. So h at 3 is equal to g at f at 3. But f at 3 is 1. We can see that right on the graph. So let's make that substitution and we find that h at 3 is equal to g at 1. Let's use our calculator to evaluate g at 1. Go ahead and type the function g in as y1 on the calculator. Actually, I recommend first resetting your calculator by hitting second plus 7, 1, 2. That's second plus 7, 1, 2. 2. Ta-da! Fresh calculator. So hit your y equals button and enter g of x right here. It should look like this. We need to evaluate g at 1, but we just entered function g as y1. So really we need to evaluate y1 at 1. Quit your way out of here by hitting second quit. You can make y1 show up by hitting alpha, trace, and enter because y1 is already selected. We can evaluate y1 at 1 by putting 1 in parentheses right next to the y1 and hitting enter. Kabam! 2.0412. The College Board will accept three decimal places, but some students try to round to three decimal places and then they round wrong and lose a point for no reason. So my strong recommendation is always use four decimal places and never try to round. So that's it for A part one. A part two, find all values of x for which f of x is equal to one or indicate that there are no such values. This line shows where the output values are equal to one. We can see that f of x is equal to one here, here, and here. So that's at negative 3, 0, and positive 3. That's it for A part 2. B part 1. Find all real values of x as decimal approximations for which g of x equals 2, or indicate that there are no such values. We can use the graphing calculator to find where g of x is equal to 2. Hit your y equals button and enter y equals 2 as y2. g of x will equal 2 at the intersection point between g of x and the line y equals 2. So hit the graph button and let's see what we've got. The intersection point is right here. We can find it by hitting second, trace, and choosing option 5 for intersect. Move the pointer as close as possible to the point of intersection and hit enter three times. Enter, enter, enter. There it is, 1.0571. B part two, determine the end behavior of G as X decreases without bound. Express your answer using the mathematical notation of a limit. As X decreases without bound means the limit as X approaches negative infinity. If it had said as X increases without bound, we would write as x approaches positive infinity. You must put g of x right here. And now we are going to see if g of x is approaching infinity 
is g of x approaching negative infinity, or is g of x approaching some constant, like an asymptote? We know that the model a times b to the x is an exponential function, which looks like this if a is positive and the b value is greater than 1. a is positive in the case of g of x, however, b is between 0 and 1, not greater than 1. When the b value is between 0 and 1, we get a decreasing exponential function, sometimes referred to as exponential decay. As x increases without bound, g of x approaches 0. It approaches the x-axis. In other words, the limit as x approaches infinity of g of x is 0. However, as we go to the left, or as x decreases without bound, the value of g of x rises infinitely. So, the limit as x approaches negative infinity of g of x equals infinity. This is the answer to B part 2. Notice that you should not need the graphing calculator to answer this question. However, however, a glance at the graphing calculator does confirm what we already knew. As x decreases without bound, g of x increases without bound. In other words, the limit as x approaches negative infinity is positive infinity. C part 1. Determine if f has an inverse. This question is often worded as, determine if f is invertible. At a glance, we can tell that f does not have an inverse and is not invertible because it fails the horizontal line test. If you can draw a horizontal line that hits more than one point on a function, that function is not invertible. So we can simply say no right here. Keep it simple. Just answer with a yes or no for C part 1. However, be very careful. What I just said about uh, failing the horizontal line test cannot be mentioned for C part 2, which says, give a reason for your answer based on the definition of a function and the graph of y equals f of x. AP graders are telling me that they are going to be extremely picky about how this answer is worded. So, I want you to give this answer word for word on the AP exam. F does not have an inverse, or if it was worded this way, you would say F is not invertible, because each output value of F is not mapped from a unique input value. Let me emphasize a few features of this answer. Notice that you must mention output value first and input value second. Also, you must be specific right here. You have to say each output value of f of x. If you just say each output value is not mapped from a unique input value, you will not get the point. Also, you must use the word unique. But guess what? Even if you say all of this word for word, you still don't get the point unless you include an example. For example, f at 0 is equal to 1, and f at 3 is equal to 1. Now you've earned the point. Before I end the video, let me show you what the justification would look like for a function that is invertible, that does have an inverse. You would say, yes, f is invertible because each output value of f of x is mapped from a unique input value. If the answer is yes, you don't need any examples of anything. Yes, we can tell that f is invertible. It does have an inverse because it passes the horizontal line test. Any horizontal line only hits one point. However, if you base your justification on the vertical line test or the fact that this is a one-to-one -one function, you will lose the point. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. But also, if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.